I'm in 4.5 cams in motion and in this video we are going to be focusing on the simulating of the automata in Autodesk Inventor. To give you an idea of a finished product of what you'll have by the end of this, here's an assembly. Now this assembly consists of a box, um, you have a cam in here, an axle, a handle, and as you rotate this axle and handle, you'll notice the cam is rotating with it and it's staying and the follower is moving right along the cam. So that's important because it's moving along the ruler up top, which will allow us to collect data and then create a motion graph after this. Now before we jump right into Inventor, we have to do some file management. So you're going to go into File Explorer, navigate to our shared drive, my name, the period that I have you, and in there you're going to see a new folder called 4.5 Automata Simulation. In that folder is an assembly along with a bunch of parts that are inside of that assembly. So I'm going to go back to period one. I want you to right click that 4.5 folder, the Automata Simulation, copy it, go into your student folder, find your name, and then right click paste. So now you have a copy of that assembly and all those files in that folder. The only thing that's missing in that folder is your cam that you designed. So we need to go into your 4.5 cams in motion folder, grab whatever cam you made, right click copy it, go back into your folder, then go ahead and go into the automata simulation folder and then right click paste. What that'll do is it now has your cam in there with everything and then we're going to bring your cam into that assembly. So now you can go ahead and open up Autodesk Inventor if you haven't done so already. I'm going to close this assembly so we can start from scratch. And the first thing you need to do is open up the assembly uh, in that new folder that we just pasted. So I'm going to go open. You are going to navigate to your student folder and go into the 4.5 automata simulation folder. So go into your student folder and open that up. In there you should see all the parts in the assembly. Go ahead and open up the assembly. Now before we jump into this, just take a look over here in your, br in your model browser on the left hand side of the screen. You have this box which kind of contains everything. You have a guide that moves. You have an axle and a handle that will be rotating later. You have the follower, which is that part that's moving up and down. And then you have a ruler that's currently turned off, but we'll talk about that later. So I just wanted you to take notice of those parts within the uh, model browser. And just so you know, those parts are all in specific locations. Like, for example, the handle, if I click and move it, right, it's staying in an exact location, rotating along a specific axis. Now I'm going to hit Control-Z because I want to maintain where that was, but I just wanted to show you an example of that. So all these parts have been brought in, and they've been put in a specific spot to do certain things, and the way that we do that in an inventor and in an assembly is we use something called constraints, and the constraints are up here in the relationship panel. And that what it does is it kind of locks those parts in to do exactly what you want within an assembly. So let's go ahead and bring in your cam. So you're going to click the place button up in the top left corner. And now we need to go back into that 4.5 automata simulation folder and go ahead and um, click on your cam. Now mine's on my desktop because I'm using a sample folder. And find your cam. So open up. We're going to place in this cam whatever one you made and then hit open. Now before we place it in, it's not facing in the correct, it's not in the correct orientation that I'd like it. I'd actually like it to be rotated 90 degrees so it's aligned with this rod right here that it's going to go on. So what I'm going to do is right click and I want to rotate this thing on the Y axis 90 degrees. So I'm going to left click that and notice how it is now rotated. Now that it's in the correct orientation, I'm simply just going to left click once. If you move your mouse, if you had multiple instances of this part, you could keep clicking and adding in more, but we only need one. 
So I'm going to either hit escape on the keyboard or right click and say OK. So our cam is in there and we are now ready to constrain it to the various parts of my assembly. Go ahead up top and click on that constraint button. Your place constraint window is going to pop up. I'm going to scoot it over here so I can kind of see what I'm doing. You notice the tabs up top, so there's various types of place constraints. You have assembly, motion, transitional, constraint set. For right now, we're going to stick with the assembly tab. And then under that, there's various ones like mate, angle, tangent, insert, symmetry. For constraining the cam um, to the follower, we're going to start with a mate constraint. So what I want to do is I want to constrain this to this. So that's what I'm going to do. It, it wants you to click two selections. So my first selection is going to be this work plane one of the cam. And then my second selection is going to be this mate with mid plane of cam. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. You'll notice right away that it is now locked those two planes in with one another. And I'm going to hit apply. If you don't hit apply, it's not going to work. It's got to hit that apply button. The next constraint that I want to do is I want to constrain this axis of the cam to this axis of my axle. So again, I'm going to stick with a make constraint. I'm going to click on this axis for my first selection. For my second selection, I'm going to click on this axis. So you'll notice right away it is now aligned right there. I'm going to hit apply. And then the last one that I want to do is I want to constrain this work plane 2 of the cam to this work plane 1 of the axle and handle. So again, I'm going to use a mate. Let me orbit around. Remember, shift in the mouse wheel allows you to orbit. I just want you to be able to see this clearly. I'm clicking on this plane for my first selection. And then I'm going to click on this plane for my second selection. And it is now constrained those two. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to close this window. I'm going to hit the home button and then now if you go ahead and click on this handle and axle and move it you'll notice that it is now rotating. Okay, I'm going to hit control Z to undo that and then now um, we're ready to move on to the next part and before we do that go ahead and click that save button for me. So the next constraint that we want to do is something called a transition constraint. And what that means is we want to constrain the cam. You know what? I'm going to turn off the visibility of this box because it's really getting annoying to me. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the box over here in my model browser. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of it. So you notice it's grayed out and it's gone now. It's still there, but it's just not getting in our way. So I'm going to orbit a little bit, shift in the mouse wheel. I want to constrain the bottom of this follower to the edge of my cam. So that way when the cam rotates, this follower stays right along that face. So that's what we're going to do with a transition constraint. So I'm going to go back up to constrain. And now we're going to move on down the line here to transitional. And there's only one option. So we need to make two selections again. There's a moving face and there's a transitional face. The moving face, we are going to click on, for our first selection, this cylindrical edge, or face, I should say, of the follower. So I'm going to click on that. And then for my second selection, I can click any face of the outer the outer face of the, um, of the cam. So I'm going to click on this face right here. And right away, you'll now notice that those two are now perfectly aligned, and I can hit Apply. I'm going to close that can uh, place constraint window and again now if I rotate you'll see that the follower is staying right along the face of the cam okay I'm gonna control Z to bring that back to where it was do me a favor hit save again okay so now we can pretty much move that handle anywhere we want but that's not really gonna help us later when we want to collect data Later on in the next part of this project, we're going to be calculating the displacement of the, or yes, the displacement of the follower based off of this ruler. So as you turn the handle at different degrees, so like 0 or 30 or 60 or 45, 
what is the displacement of this follower and we'll take measurements on that and collect that data to create our motion graph later. So we want to be able to rotate this handle at specific angles. So that's the next constraint that we're going to do. I'm going to just click the home button here and then I'm going to go back up to constrain. And actually, you know what? I'm going to close that. I need to uh, adjust some work planes first. So what I want to do over here in the model browser is expand the follower part. And then I need to turn off this work plane. I don't want to see it. So I'm going to right click this mate with uh, mid plane of cam. And I'm going to turn off the visibility. And then I want to turn on the angle of rotation follower. So I'm going to right click that and turn on the visibility of that one. And we're going to turn off one more work plane. I'm going to click the follower again to or collapse that. And then now I'm going to expand the axle handle part. And I'm going to turn off work plane one. So I'm going to right click and turn off the visibility of that just so it's not getting in our way. Now we're ready to add that last constraint. So I'm going to go constraint. And this time we're going to be using an angle constraint under the assembly tab. So I'm going to click on angle. And there's different options. There is a direct, directed, undirected, and explicit. We're going to click this directed version. And then again with this constraint we need to make two selections. So the first selection is going to be, let me just orbit a little bit and kind of zoom so you can see this. I'm clicking on work plane 2 for the cam. So that's going to be my first selection. So I'm going to left click that. And then my second selection is going to be the angle of rotation plane for the follower, which is this one. So you can see which one I'm clicking there. All right, so now those two are aligned. And then I can hit apply. So now let's test out that constraint that we just added. So after I click apply, I'm going to close this. Now if I try and go and rotate the handle and axle parts, it's not going to let me. You see that do not enter sign. That's because we've locked in an angle constraint. So if I collapse the axle and handle here, and I believe I expand the follower. Yep. If I expand the follower here, down on the bottom, you'll see angle 2, and then right now it's at 0 degrees. If you double-click that, or just click it once, actually I'm going to double-click, nope, double-click it, or just click once. Now I can type in, say, 30 degrees, so 30 and enter. You'll notice that, let me switch to a right view here, make this a little bit easier to see. You'll notice that the handle is now rotated 30 degrees. If I go 60 You'll see it keeps moving, and so on, 90, maybe 120, okay, and that is all, and it is rotating at the specific degrees. Now, why is that important? Well, let's turn on the ruler really quick. So, right-click the ruler part over here and turn on the visibility, so now that's yellow, and you'll see a ruler come into play. So, as we rotate this handle at specific degrees by typing it in here, the follower is moving up and down on the ruler and we're getting different measurements for the top of the ruler which we will be collecting later in an Excel document and then finally creating a motion graph. So go ahead and save this and then in the next video we'll talk about how to use this thing to do that and also how to collect the data in an Excel document.